I first moved to this town 53 years ago, when I was five years old. I moved away 38 years ago, when I was about 20 years old. And yet still, my dreams each night often take place here. The dreams are of people and events different than ever I knew here, but behind the story, the setting is often Douglaston. Douglaston isn't a separate town in the usual sense, but actually part of the borough of Queens in New York City. Nearby, you find the typical urban bustle, traffic, and tall apartment buildings. Douglaston is a small suburban neighborhood cut off from the rest of the borough by a railroad line which is crossed by only two roads. But cross the tracks on one of those two roads and you enter a bucolic waterside community whose tree-lined streets and saltwater vistas on Long Island Sound can leave a child with an impression that echoes in dreams and memories a half century later. On a few bright and gentle days in early September, I returned, an archaeologist of my own ancient past, looking for traces of what I knew under the layers of what's there now. The now is quite different. The town has become an enclave of the wealthy and even passed a law to bar the construction of mansions too big for their own building lots. But under the layers of opulence, the traces remain. I recognize those trees. They are, many of them, the same that were here 50 years ago. Where I once placed my hand, small, childish, and smooth against the wood, I now place a hand as gnarled and veined and craggy as the bark itself. The trees have grown huge, 50 years with little trimming or cutting, and they make parts of the town look as though it were built in a primeval forest. But 50 years seems to have brought some of the trees to their terminal stage, and here and there are the stumps and haggard remains of trees who finally grew too old. I will resist the temptation to make any morbid comparisons with myself. This elegant metal sculpture is actually a fire alarm call box and it looks exactly the way it did in 1956 when I watched my friend Eddie pull a false alarm just to watch the fire engines come. I can't imagine the New York City Fire Department in the 21st century relies on this kind of a system anymore. True, the fire hydrants are hardly any newer than the call boxes. Given the classic lines of these columns, an artist or sculptor must have had a hand in their design. Perhaps they're being left standing as an artistic relic. Every childhood has its mysterious things and places. We had dog graves. This plaque, embedded in a sidewalk on Center Drive, looks just as it did 50 years ago when the story was that it was the grave of somebody's pet dog. We were careful never to step on it. This house is located on what was once a grassy slope. It looks pretty flat now. And that slope had a pet grave, a dog grave, complete with a cross and an inscription. Do they hear ghostly barking coming from the basement late at night? There were two beaches in Douglaston 50 years ago, and behind this tangle of weedy growth, which is mostly bamboo, is one of them. You can still make your way through to get to that beach. This was actually a street, this was the end of the street, that led directly to the beach. Now, push through the jungle of invasive bamboo and eventually you get there. The irony is that this beach, it's called Parsons Beach, was once muddy and rocky, hardly suitable for swimming. Now it's clean and sandy because there was a dredging project a couple of decades ago which helped clean parts of the bay. Just when it can be used, it's hidden. 
Meanwhile, another beach called Arley Beach used to be relatively sandy, but has become a weedy, rocky expanse, even though a stairway still leads teasingly down to the water. As Parsons Beach was hidden, so was the red light at the end of the street that kept automobiles from rolling out onto the sand. That light still flickers dimly after dark, a glowing beacon in the weeds, the last dying reminder of the life of the beach as a public place for everyone, including children, as long as no one drove their car out onto the sand. I doubt that 50 years ago I ever would have imagined I would be back here in the 21st century walking these same streets and seeing many of the same shapes, forms, and things that surrounded me in childhood. But my return was brief, and I leave the town to its current residents. There is only the hope that some of those living here now, especially the children, may also find Douglaston forming memories that will resonate for a half century or more in their dreams. Shine at 